I'm Cam Moon. My definition of relentless is keep your eyes on the prize and whether you think you can or whether you think you can't. Either way, you're right. Hello, listeners, and welcome to the Relentless Podcast. I am your host, Kyle Dubay. Very cool guest today, uh, Mr. Cam Moon, who is the play-by-play voice for the Edmonton Oilers of the National Hockey League. It is so cool to have you here, Cam. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me on. I, I don't know if, if I'm a, a cool guest, but maybe you're just in the dregs of summer and, and need somebody to fill time. No, you're okay. cool. You're cool. Well, we're we'll gonna see. Talk, we're gonna, we'll you see. know, we're going to find out how cool you are because we're going to talk about your career. Sure. And if I'm not mistaken, your full name, because you, you and I, are, I think, are a similar age. You were born in 70, 70. 70. So if I'm not mistaken, your full name is Cameron Wolf Child Harvest Moon. Your parents were hippies. Yeah, yeah. Yes. They were uh, They were really into that. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's not true at all. Nope, not at all. That's not at all. Not even. Um, but Cam, it's good to have you here, man. We've had the privilege of meeting a couple times. Well, I've had the privilege of meeting you a couple times, uh, very very quickly through our our good mutual friend Rob Walsher, who owns yeah. Ro- uh, Road Fifty Five. And I knew all about you because my wife. We're going to get right into this. My wife, not often, but sometimes talks about other men. Um, <laughs> In, in a really high regard, and you are, uh, my wife uh, is an instructor at Nate Northern Alberta Institute of Technology in the radio television program. She was in the media for years. She started there, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. And you are an alumni from there, so you actually go back and you'll talk to the students and you give your time and all that. And she is many times, oh, that Cam Moon. Oh, he's just so nice. Oh, my God. He's just so, he is so positive. Oh, the, he's just, he leaves and everyone talks about him for a couple of days. And I'm just like, just oh, shut boy. up about this guy. I made the cut. Yeah. Of the few that get talked about. Yeah, like it's. I feel like I've accomplished it's something a, here today. But it's, you know, it's just annoying to well, me. I'm, just because then I meet I'm you, you know, to, I met you face to, to face <laughs> and I'm like, you know, we have a similar haircut. But you're, very similar. But you're fit. You're like successful, wow. you're cool, you're like a big play by play. You've been in hockey your whole life, which is really what I would have done if I could have. But I mean, so, anyways, yeah, good to have you here, man. <laughs> Begrudgingly said. <laughs> Begrudgingly, good to have you. Yeah, but well. in all seriousness, it is it is great to have you here. Let's talk about yes. you, Cam. Let's talk about um your your dad, Warren Moon. Let's talk about <laughs> My favorite Edmonton Eskimo, Warren Moon. Of all time? Yeah, of all time, for sure. There's a long list. I'm a big fan of the team, the Elks now. Did anyone ever think he was your dad? No. No? No, they did not. No. no. But, you uh, never got mistaken. No, I him. never did. But uh, maybe he's a relative way, way, way down way the line. Down the but, line. You yeah. are from Edmonton. Yes. Born in Edmonton, raised in not in Edmonton. Well, mostly sort of. mostly in Edmonton. Okay. Uh, my dad worked for CN. Right. Uh, so we did move a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, my first two years here in Edmonton. Uh, first two years were in the Baldwin neighborhood nice. of Edmonton, yeah. so yeah. in the Northeast. Then we moved to Montreal for a couple. Then we moved to Kamloops for seven. Mm-hmm. And I started school, hockey, and baseball in Kamloops. And we moved back to Edmonton. Uh, right near the end of grade five. Okay. And we lived in Evansdale, also yep. in the Northeast. Yeah. As I am a Maple Leaf Athletic Club alum. Nice. Go Leafs. Yeah. And yeah, so then it was uh, the the last year of elementary school and then junior high and high school here in Edmonton. Yeah. Yeah. You uh, played sports growing up. Mm-hmm. Loved them. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm assuming you excelled at a bunch of sports, but your main sport that you excelled at but we'll get into this, uh, was hockey. And you were a goaltender. Yeah. Well, I, was, I don't know about excelled. I was okay. Well, you were okay to the point where you played junior A yeah. and you went to the WHL. Yeah. So you can say you were okay, but I don't. it doesn't matter to me if you go pro. If you're hitting those leagues, you are an elite yeah. player because you have to. But you had to work very hard well, to get there. I you? really did. It wasn't – I wasn't, uh, you know, one of those guys that you knew right from – 1415 was was going to be a surefire WHL player and more than likely a pro. I mean those are the those are the best of the best. Sure. Those are the super elite. Sure. It wasn't one of those. I had to work really hard to to make the team every year and in my last year at Bantam I didn't make the team. You didn't make the AAA. 
No, I got no. I got gassed from the Leafs team. I went and played Southside for oh. a year. So, so you did do AAA, but yeah. you had to go, you had to go to the other Kinda side. Kind of had to stick yeah. it to them a bit that year. <laughs> but then I came back and and made the Leafs in my the I played one year midget. Uh, yeah. So sixteen, seventeen. Yeah. Uh, I I made the team that next year and then went on and played junior. But yeah. I, and I think coming back to Edmonton really helped hockey wise. And I say this because it was so much harder to make the teams. Mm. In Kamloops, the group of kids that I, I was playing with at the Adam level, so it would have been 10-year-olds, yeah. 10 and 11s, uh, that group of players I was likely to play with all the way up. Right. You know? Yeah, like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that was the top team. And, yeah. And you come to Edmonton, and there was just so many more kids. Yeah. And then – and. Not so much like when I first got here because you're at the lower levels and it wasn't quite as tiered like it is now. But as you move towards the end of your minor hockey, then it became quite tiered yeah. and it was quite difficult yeah. to, to make the team. So you had to work really hard to work do it. Work very hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where did you play junior A? Well, I started when I was 17. I, went, I was in Fort McMurray. Nice. Yeah. For the oil barons. Oil barons. Yeah. I remember my... Uh, my dad dropping me off at the the Greyhound bus station here in downtown Edmonton. I had a I had a hockey bag, I had a a, a suitcase with clothes, yeah. and that's it. Like, <laughs> yeah. all right, good luck to you. Yeah. We'll see you. Best wishes, son. Yeah, and up I went to Fort Mac, and I was there till about December, and I got dealt uh, in December to to St. Albert. Okay, and they thought uh, one of their goalies was quitting. As it turns out, he didn't. Uh, so they had a 20 and a 19 and me at 17. So I never played. Oh. So the second half of the year, I didn't play. And it was incredibly disappointing. And it was a real gut punch. Yeah. And it was a real introduction to the business of junior mm, hockey. You're a piece of meat. Yeah. There's there's no guarantees. And you get you know, you know get what you get. Yeah. I that was, was the St. Albert Saints. Yeah. And I, yeah, I didn't play living, all that But now you're half. back living at home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was like, uh, I was kind no, of No, I liked living away. I, yeah. Yeah, that was all part of the junior hockey experience as far as I was concerned. Exactly. I wanted I wanted to experience everything. Yeah. Not just the hockey That's part. right. Yeah, we need the life. It's yeah. got to be fun. Yeah. I was able to get my release, and I went to Nippowin the next year. Okay. The head coach was Rob Dom. Went on to coaching the WHL, coached U of A Bears, U of a, coached in pro. Very successful. Very coach. successful. Yeah. And he had coached in St. Albert previously. Mm -hmm. So through uh, – some guys that coached me uh, in Bantam, they knew Rob and gave them the heads up about my situation and that I was a free agent. Yeah. So I landed up going there with a few other guys from the Maple Leafs. Okay. Uh, I had Corey Osmack there and Dave Pudlubney, a couple of guys that I had played uh, Alberta Cup with yeah. and had played uh, M. Lack with. Yeah. And Rob had done a really good job of recruiting some Alberta guys. I want to say we had eight or nine Alberta guys on yeah. that team. Yeah. Uh, and we had a really good team. And, and things went well. Uh, we had a team that went to the SJ final. And uh, halfway through the season, I got yarded up, played a few games with the PA Raiders. Cool. Then after that. Because PA, they were, they were in the WHL. Yeah, they were yeah, in WHL. Yeah. Played a couple games. Then they, they made a trade for a 20-year-old goalie. Freddie Chabot went on to play in the NHL. And they sent me back to Nippon And they uh, dusted me off of their list in Saskatoon put me on their list soon thereafter. This is before the Bantam Yeah, drafts, before so. the drafts. And I went to Saskatoon at the end of that season. Um, and that's where I first met Rob, uh, here from Road 55. Yeah, yeah. And that uh, springboarded me into the Western Hockey into League. The but Western yeah, Hockey League. Really good time in How many Nippon. years did you do there? Two, three? Yeah, a couple. A couple years yeah. with the Blades. 19 and 20. And great experience. Awesome. Loved playing hockey. It was yeah. great. Could have probably tried to pursue it a little bit more after. I don't know. But thought, <laughs> no, I'm going to use this dub money. Because at WHL, we talked about this. Yes. Uh, WHL, my son yeah. had, a, had a short stint in the dub, my boy Jax. And they do have an incredible program. For those of you that don't know this, if you play junior A, your goal is to, to get to the highest level of hockey as you can. But what you're trying to do is get scholarships in typically an NCAA school or an exactly. NCAA, any kind of school down sure. in the States. If you play one shift in a WHL game, preseason, any kind of game, you are not eligible for any NCAA, any kind of scholarships in the States, which is 
kind of goofy, but it is what it is. NCAA rule. Right. So what the dub does, what WHL does is they will give their players essentially a year of schooling, and that's tuition and books for every year that they play. And now the contracts are quite different. I mean, my kid lucked out. You just had to play one game a season and you got that. Yeah. Which is essentially what you ended up getting. Yeah, it, and now it's the the program has uh, has developed and grown over the years. To what it is now was not what it was back then, but right. what it is now is absolutely amazing. It's amazing for you know guys that play in the Western League. So you play you know four years and and you don't go pro and you can go play university for four years. It's all covered and yeah. and now a lot of the the U sport teams are. Are matching yeah. the Western League numbers. Yeah, even if they're matching half of it. It's I helping. know. Yeah. Yeah. So you're making out like a bandit. Uh, so yeah, which is great. It is great. It's awesome. It's a, it, it doesn't get enough publicity for how good it is because mm-hmm. I mean, it's guaranteed. It's guaranteed. You don't even have to play for the hockey team. Well, it's guaranteed. So, I mean, I'll, I'll be very honest with you. And, and my son, unfortunately, due to our circumstances in our family, he ended up, technically, he played in four different seasons yes. that happened and the reason why is because when he was he, well actually he played in three because when he, he signed as a 15 year old we lucked out yeah part of the contract as an underage you get one year automatic played some exhibition games came home played in the bubble for a little bit came home and then went back played some came home and he's got four years of university for 12 league games played awesome. in the dub so I feel almost bad, but we were talking about it. It's like, well, I don't feel bad. They signed the contract. We That's signed right. the contract. But I mean, you think about it. I don't even know how much tuition is right now. He's going back to school in September. Let's call tuition and books for a year, what, 10? Probably 10-ish. Okay, about seven. Seven? Yeah. And ish. seven and eight, and we don't have to pay for it. I yeah. always said that, that when we signed the contract, it was more for us than him. <laughs> right? <laughs> he does. He realizes it now yes. as a 20-year-old. Oh, that's great. Right? But um, anyways- you then take your dub money and yeah. you go to school. Where do you go? Well, I go to Nate. I Where know, else would I, I go? We already talked about my now, wife's crush on you. I <laughs> I started going to the Nate goalie school when I was 11. Okay. When we first moved back to, to Edmonton. I remember going to the Nate hockey school with Perry Pern. Exactly. Yeah. So Perry was there back then and they would have current Nate players and, and some former Nate players. They, they would run the camp. Yeah. And it was really good. Yeah. And because I lived in the Northeast, it wasn't far to go. Yeah. yeah. And I, I'm, you talk about value for dollar. I yeah. mean, the, it, you wouldn't get a better deal than, no. than the Nate Hockey School. So I went to that and then I got to know Perry. Yeah. And then as I got a little bit older, sometimes they'd have uh, they'd have a hockey school. They didn't have enough goalies. Right. So he'd, Cam, can you come for this week? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And because they needed goalies. Yeah. So got to know Perry, and then when I came to school, I honestly I wasn't even looking to play for the team. Right. Perry had heard because I got in in the second semester. When Perry heard I came in, he contacted me. We worked something out, and, and I played for the club. You know that last half of yeah, that season yeah, yeah, yeah. at Nate while I was going to school. And you know what's so funny? Like going after playing, playing junior. You know, four years of junior, and I'm not going to play pro. Like whatever. In my mind, this is how I thought. Whatever I do next is not going to be as good as what I just did. Sure. Like, that was the way I thought about yeah, it. Like, yeah. what possibly could yeah. be as good as playing pro? Yeah. I go to Nate, blew my expectations out of the water for a lot of reasons. Uh, playing for the hockey team was fun. Good bunch of guys. We had a really good team. Yeah. Landed up winning the whole thing. Nice. Uh, yeah. And some guys on that team that I still talk to to this day – and we had a great time. Perry was an outstanding coach. And, you know, clearly went on to, yeah. to coach pro forever. Very successful. Yeah, very successful. But the school, it was it was really nice to finally go to school for something I actually wanted to learn. That was a concept yeah. that I, I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, I never wanted to find the value of X. You right. know what I mean? Right. <laughs> that, that never really intrigued me. the same way. Yeah. So going there and and it opened my eyes my entire life to that point. I just hung out with hockey people. You know, I didn't have like friends at school for the most part. I didn't have many that didn't play. Sure. That so, weren't involved in the game. Exactly. Yeah. And and you know what it's like. You, your teammates, you know, growing up, uh, the, my Maple Leaf buddies, those are the guys I hung out with. They didn't necessarily go to my school. In fact, most times they didn't. Right. So you're 
those are the guys you're hanging out with. So I get to school and now I have got a very eclectic group of people. Some that are interested in music, some that are interested in news or right. in production or whatever. There was a couple of us interested in sports, but that, you know, that wasn't the majority. So it opened my eyes to mm. like, there's more to life than, than just this. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. just chasing this puck around or yeah. in my case, fishing it yeah. out from behind me. <laughs> so like that part was, and I was loving it because, and I've always loved like radio television but mostly radio um and, and learning about the different jobs that mm. uh, existed mm -hmm. at the radio station. so much of the behind the scenes stuff that people don't even think about sure yeah who writes those commercials yeah. who makes those commercials yeah. who comes up with these goofy ideas yeah. and i yeah. like coming up with goofy ideas yeah. so it was fun and the instructors were outstanding and it was like honestly i had such a good time and i it blew my mind how much fun i had i was actually like it went so fast and i was so sad that it was over mm. and i still talk to uh, a few of my classmates you mm. know like from back down it's a long time ago yeah. now and then but it did totally prepare me for the next step although yeah. i kind of took the next step in my second year at school yeah so let's talk about that because uh, then you started so then you loved all the different types of people but then you went into television television broadcasting for what sport hockey there you yeah. go <laughs> weird so you met all these people you're like i actually don't really like people that like well, music. i'm just not very good at anything <laughs> else so, so be you, honest so in your was it your third term because the way the way the nate programs work well the two-year programs you do three semesters and then your fourth semester is out in your practicum correct so so year one was my first semester because yeah. that was the back half right and then year two was semesters two and three yeah and then technically third year semester four September to December, you are now out doing for who? What my your practicum? practicum. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, I was uh, working at uh, MG twelve hundred in Saint Albert. Okay, it was an AM oldie station. Yeah, I remember it. Okay, I'm a Saint Albert guy. Okay, you'd know. And uh, they had me doing like community events and stuff. Yeah. And then when the practicum, I negotiated my practicum down. <laughs> I did. Because I think it's supposed to be 15 weeks. Yeah. No, I didn't do 15 yeah, weeks. Yeah. <laughs> because what I did was in my second year of school, that's when I got that television gig where I was doing the color on TSM broadcasts of WHL games. So back then, Sportsnet didn't exist. It wasn't even around yet. And TSN had the, the junior package. And they did O and games in the Quebec Major Junior League and the Western League. And prior to me doing it, it was Bob McKenzie. Okay. Yeah. Well, Bob was getting too busy. Right. Right. He didn't want to do the games out west. Right. I mean, it's a travel and da, 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 da. So they like, let's get somebody that just played. Right. And then I happened to be going to school for all this. And I got to know those guys when I was playing because when they would televise a game, nobody would say anything to them. Right. And I would talk their ear off. Yeah. Yeah. About whatever. Like, hey, what's going on And they're probably thinking, this guy's going to probably take our jobs on it. No, no. They're like, this guy can't stop pucks. And that's why he's talking. <laughs> he to can't us. stop talking and he can't stop pucks. Yeah. So there yeah. you go. So they uh, they reached out to me. It was, it was Paul Romanek was doing the play by play then. Right. And he was kind of the guy that went to bat for me, um, and and thankfully he did. And it just so they got. And I had no idea what I was doing. I was terrible. And I like, but I knew everybody and I knew the league. But I was so over my skis. It was ridiculous because you're going from student to national television. Like there, there's, there's a bunch of steps in there mm -hmm. that I was not making. Mm -hmm. And it was obvious when I was do on. Do you have any of the old footage of that? Or do you have any of no. the old footage of the Nate days? Cause, no. Because even today, like, it's terrible. <laughs> my wife, when she went to Nate, like luckily for me, my wife yeah. um, is so smart. Like, and gorgeous. She, my wife is everything, man. Like people look at us and they're like, how the hell did he get her? And but here's the thing, obviously not bright when she was young because she married me very young, okay, like right. 90. So when she was at Nate, um, and then went early into CTV to work for them, I do love if we can ever look the back at. Oh my oh, gosh, yeah. it's, it's awesome stuff. because yeah. well, by the time Jeanette was, you know, she still does a little on air stuff for CTV with the Wednesday's Child, but like the early days, and you would have been the same where it's like the voice just wasn't where it is, where it should oh. be. Where you know, I just remember, you know. 
Chinero Sachak, Sam Fernandez. It was just so funny. So I would love to see old footage of you. It and the flow. Incredible. I had the flow going. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it was ridiculous. I would like to see old pictures of you with the flow. Same with me. I had a mullet. It was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah. That was standard My 20-year-old player. has a mullet right now. And he, Good for him. He did it. They do it now all purposely the same way we yeah, did. classic. And my wife is like, this is so unbelievable how much he looks like you when you were young and i'm like that's jackson awesome. this is what you that's have to look just, forward yeah, here's, to here's, yeah there's the future get to the gym bud <laughs> 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 okay sorry to interrupt you no, i just i'm just these thoughts of early days for broadcasters yeah. are pretty awesome to think about so because i had done that all through my second year yeah i negotiated that my practicum i probably don't need to do the full because i've Cause done you've already done some a lot right yeah any and, any nate students out there right now don't try that don't, tr- don't but, try that because some do i think try that but anyways anyway so then i, I went to mg 1200 um oh also in my second year i was doing color on the wetaskiwin iceman radio broadcast on am 1440 and that was a junior a team junior, junior b, b. <laughs> nice yeah but so, getting getting the reps in well that was the thing back then there's no there's no internet. No. Nope. So in either you are on the air for a real broadcast. Right. Or you're not. Right. Or it doesn't exist. Right. So the amount of opportunity are minuscule. Yeah. Like back then in the Alberta Junior League, I don't know, maybe three teams had a radio broadcast. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. No Junior B team would. No. And in the Western League, they had theirs. But back then there was like 15 teams in the league. Yeah. And five of them are in the US and you're right. not getting those jobs. Right. So like I said, opportunities minuscule compared right. to now. So that I go to MG twelve hundred after I do my my practicum of uh, community events, uh, and MG twelve hundred was in Granite Mall. Yeah, 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 up at the top. Yeah, up at the top. Yeah, you yeah, went yeah, to the mall, went to the top. I know. Yeah, I know. good times. I had good times there. To this. I love the oldies. So then they hired me to do their hunt for the red MG okay. contest. So I drove around in this. It was good looking car, not a good car, right. bad car. I vaguely remember this. So I'm driving around <laughs> this red MG, and I'm like all over town. I went to three locations a day yeah for six days a week for two months oh, people wow. had to find me and i'd bring them on the air yeah. i'll go live to cam he's oh, yeah. at the corner of whatever and yeah. whatever and i was giving out prizes and just basically being a game show host yeah, yeah. but i was so excited that i was doing something yeah on the air making next to nothing yeah. didn't care yeah uh, and at that time, so I'm doing the TV and then like some radio stuff through the winter. I just work hockey schools in the summer. And that's, right. I've been doing that since I was 17 years sure. old. That's how I found out about the AM 1440 in Wetaskiwin was through Robbie Hartnell. Hartz played in Lethbridge. He was from Wetaskiwin. We worked the hockey school together up cool. in Gold Lake. So he told me about it. So the summer of, I think it was 94, I go to work the hockey school in Penticton. Any young hockey players out there and uh, thinking of working a hockey school, the one in Penticton, I wholeheartedly endorse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good times to be had I there. I bet, I bet. Yes, During yes. the summer, Peach oh Fest. They're like, can you work the whole eight weeks? Yes, I can yes, work I the whole can. eight weeks. I can, I can do 12. They had to kick me out of town <laughs> at the end of that. We're run out of town. Yeah. It's a fine line. Yeah. So I, I worked that summer in Penticton. And again, if there's, you know, I'm not finding out about things via the internet at this time yet. And uh, a guy that I, I worked with at the at the school was an assistant coach in the BCJ with uh, with the Couch and Valley Capitals. He says, "Hey, Mooner, I think there's a play by play job open in Nanaimo." I'm like, "Wow, that'd, that'd be great!" Mm-hmm. All right, so I phone there, like, "Yeah, yeah, send us a resume and a tape," because back then it was a tape, right? Like an actual, yeah, tape. an actual tape. So for the young listeners, yeah, <laughs> a tape is <laughs> an actual tape, <laughs> an actual tape. I mean, scotch tape? No, no, no. it doesn't matter. So I'd never done play-by-play. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Didn't do it in school because my first year I was playing for the team. Second year I was doing the TV stuff and I'd never called a game in my life. Right. So I was like, wow, I got to put together a tape. What am I going to do? So at that time I was helping coach uh, MLAC uh, midget double A team. And we had a game at uh, what's now called Bill Hunter, but it was a JP arena. Yeah. So I told the, the head coach and the other assistant, hey, first period, I'm not going to be on the bench. I'll come onto the bench after the first. And I knew the, the, the players on our team very well, and I knew the opposition really well too because you know we had some games under our belt. So I went and sat on the other side of the rink with a little, uh, those mini cassette recorders yeah. like you used to get at like yeah, Radio Shack. That's right, yeah. And I called one period of the game, 
And I could find in that one period three minutes that wasn't complete junk. Right. Because it was terrible. Right. But I found three minutes that was passable. Yeah. No, not good. Not good. Passable. passable. So I sent that in my resume to, uh, to Nanaimo. And they wanted to meet. And I was like, yeah, fine. I'll be there. Uh, we were coaching. We had something in Saskatoon, a tournament at the end of the year. When that was done, we got back to Edmonton, went to bed, got up early, drove all the way to Nanaimo, yeah. met with them. They offered me the gig. And I said, I still had to do, I still had two TSN games. I had to do the the Air Canada Cup that year yep. somewhere. And uh, I had to do Memorial Cup in Kamloops. Okay. So I, uh, I, they were like, yeah, you can start after that. So I loaded up and I remember mullet and I drove a Camaro. Like I fit every stereotype. You were cool. No, no, I just fit every stereotype cool. of uh, of hockey player of yeah. that era. Yeah, I threw whatever I could fire into the Camaro, which wasn't a lot. No, drove to Kamloops, unpacked it. Was in Kamloops for twelve days. Did the Memorial Cup, amazing event. Kamloops wins it. They won the they won the league. They were hosting. They won the Memorial Cup. Yeah, they, uh, and then I packed it all back in there and mm, over to Nanaimo and started my gig as play-by-play guy of the Clippers, sports guy at three radio stations. Yeah. And then once I was there for a bit, uh, the head coach of the Clippers was like, hey, you should probably be our goalie coach. So then I was a goalie <laughs> coach for a couple of years and helped run their hockey school in the summer. So wow. it's just go, go, go. So fun. I All, such just so time. many different aspects of the team, though, working like as a coach, as a broadcaster, as like just everything. Well, yeah, I know, but I, you know, I'd worked all those hockey schools. I'd been coaching the last three years leading up to right. that. And you play, you listen, you played at the yeah. highest junior level, all that type of stuff. You're, you love talking, you love people. It yeah. was, it was perfect. All those different things were perfect for you. Really? It worked out pretty good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now from there, because now we're going to go to where you had your longest stint. Yeah. Which was in the beautiful city. And I'm saying that seriously. Yeah. I lived there for six months oh, of my life. I can say about months. that later. Okay. Uh, when my wife came out of Nate, yeah. we moved to Red Deer, which is where Our- you stayed for six, no, 23, 22, 22 years. Yeah. Talk to us about how that all came about and what that, ex- and all the things you did there. Cause a lot of people think, oh, he was the play by play guy. Nah, yeah, there's a lot. So, I'd been in uh, Nanaimo for three years, and it was great, and I loved it. Mm-hmm. Loved Nanaimo. Beautiful place. Yeah, beautiful place. Yeah. Uh, had bought my first house. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was good. Then uh, my last year there, I was married, made two kids. So I'm getting by on, I mean, barely getting by yeah. as far as, as the money goes. And then uh, I had somebody phone me from Red Deer, and they said, hey, we're looking to uh, do something different here. Prior to this, uh, the radio station would hire the play-by-play guy and it was the radio station's baby. Yeah. They they sold it. It was theirs. They were like, we want to take it in house. We want to buy the airtime. We want to sell the airtime, but we're going to hire the play-by-play person. So right. you're going to sell the broadcast and, and call the games and a bunch of other stuff. Would you be interested? So yeah, I'd absolutely be interested. Yeah. And I'd worked the Sylvan Lake goalie school for sure. four summers that I did. So, and we'd stay in Red Deer. So yeah. I was very familiar with yeah. Red Deer. I knew, yeah. I knew where everything was. Yeah. So I go, this was, uh, so I go, they're like, hey, well, we'll bring you out. Okay. So my wife says, all right, how do you think it's going to go? I, I don't know. I got no idea. So I, I go to the airport in Nanaimo, fly to Calgary. They pick me up and drive me up to the, we go straight to the office. Wayne yeah. and Terry Simpson owned the the Rebels at that time. Okay. Sit in the office with Wayne. We talked about hockey for like two hours. I don't know that we talked a lot about broadcasting, maybe a little, but right. it was mostly hockey. Right. Wayne, when I played in the league, was the GM of the Lethbridge Hurricanes. Okay. So we had a lot of common ground. Yeah. We knew all the same people. Yeah. So we talked hockey for mostly hockey for two hours. Then they dropped me off at the hotel, picked me up, got me loaded because I didn't really eat much that day. So it mm-hmm. didn't take much to get me loaded. Yeah. I went back to the hotel, slept, got up, golfed 18 holes in Innisfail, lovely course. And then they threw me back to the airport and I flew back. My wife says, how'd it go? I said, I don't know. Talked hockey, got drunk, golfed, I'm here. Yeah. And then they offered me the job like two days later. <laughs> so best, must have went all right. Best job interview ever. Best job interview <laughs> ever. So yeah, then um, you know, we sold a house in uh, in Nanaimo. And then, so uh, essentially, to, yeah. to step back for a second, your job then, basically what they said to you was, listen, we need you to come and do play-by-play. But we're we're we need you to sell yeah 
what we're doing here. Like you got to get the advertisement. You Correct. like the, so now you're not just going to be the play by play guy. You're going to be the sales guy. You're going to go out and make sure that this machine is running for our broadcast. Exactly. So it's a lot of work. It was. And, and I got there in July, later July, and you're starting at well, almost zero. Right. That's tough. Cause so, they had never done that before. No, right? exactly. That's right. what I mean. Yeah. So they had a couple of sponsors on board, but that was it. So we're flying by the seat of our pants till the third weekend of September when the regular season starts. And we got it to the point where it was okay, yeah. only because we lacked time. Sure. And then we built on it and year by year by year, and it, sure. and it worked out really good. Sure. But you got to call a lot of people and you got to go see a lot of people. But what I liked about that is you got to meet all the, the prominent business people in central Alberta. Yeah. So that yeah. was that was good. It was a lot of shaking hands yeah. and kissing babies, yeah. and that's important. So that but was, it's a hustle. It's a hustle. You have to be relentless. You do need yes. to be relentless. Let's bring it back to this. You, you really, you were relentless in getting this thing started. You had to be. We had to be. Yeah, yeah. You just pick up the phone and and talk to people yeah. and and under promise and over deliver mm -hmm. and and if you truly believe in it, which I did, yeah, uh, and because I was the one doing it. If a potential sponsor said, hey, can we do this? I know whether we can do this. Yeah, that's right. You know what I mean? That's right. You don't have to ask anybody. Exactly. You don't have I, to ask. But all that, you had to do all that, which to me is a pretty much full-time job. Plus, you had to prep for every game. Plus, you had to travel on the bus with the team to all the other teams. Yeah. Like, that's a lot, man. It is. And so I did all the media relations as well. Yeah. So I put together the the media packages for the for the games, for yeah. the home games, and then sent the Red Deer information to the visiting teams. Yeah. Um, in the early years when we actually had a program, I wrote all the stories. So yeah. I wrote a ton of when, stories. Like, when did you sleep? Not much. And I'm like, yeah. In the summer, I helped with scheduling. Uh, probably set up hockey schools for them no no, no. you know well not S the sylvan lake hockey school is right. a juggernaut so yeah, they don't even compete don't even bother. don't try to compete yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. i didn't have to do that that makes sense uh, uh but i would help out on the ice uh during the season wherever was needed well although there wasn't a ton of time for yeah, that but yeah. when there was yeah like, you know what like, i still do that were now. you like a skating mascot Oh, do you do that now with the Oilers? No. Oh, I thought you said you do that now, like now with, with minor hockey teams. Oh, I thought with your new gig that's with people that I know that I thought would need a little help. You. No, he does not. Jay doesn't that. call. No, you? no, 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 not for he, that. He's not like, hey, bud, come no, and help he knows, us with he knows. You Skinner keep, will keep you far enough away <laughs> that you can't mess this up. You stay way up there, way, way, way up, up there, there, man, way up there. Way up that's there. right. Uh, so yeah, I was I was doing lots of different things. Yeah. Um, but it's fun. Oh, like it's so you're fun. loving it all. Like it's long days. Yeah. The home days are long. Like home games are, are long days. It starts early and it goes late. And if you're looking to get into this, be prepared for it. And I think people that I'd been in it my whole life. So right. you know what I mean? Like it wasn't right. a, it's not a huge shock to my system. Uh, but for some people it is, yeah. they don't realize how much gets put into it. And you've got to, you've got to allocate your time. Like at some point you need to prepare for your broadcast, right? But on home games, you're doing so many like you're setting stuff up, right? You're you're putting together packages and and stuff with the programs and whatever needs help, you know, because it's a small office. But at some point you have to dial in with what you're doing on the air because if that's no good, now you don't have sponsors, right? So it right, you got to find time. You're you're yeah you're selling the product that you're trying that you're also creating. Uh huh. Right. Interesting. Uh, Brent Sutter. Yes, then he bought the he team. He bought the team, what, a year or two after you got there? It's the year after. Right. Like that first summer, after that first year like that I was model, there. Like the model, though. Like the model of what you were doing. I said, let's keep going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he just inherited me. Right. Yeah. Right. So I just But then you worked with him for 21 years. Sure did. Quite enjoyed yeah. it. Good guy? Great guy. Yeah. The best. Yeah. The Sutters, they do have a great reputation. Yeah. Well, you know. I don't know if Daryl does as far as the way he ended with the Flames, but uh, I've uh, heard great reputation as far as people. Yeah. Right? Just um, yeah. good community people. Yes. Down to earth. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which they're cool. very uh, and incredibly generous. Right. Like in, you know, sometimes in, in junior, um, because, I mean, it's not huge dollars coming in that uh, teams have to be incredibly fiscally responsible, yeah. if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I know. Uh, but I'll tell you, like, Brent was as 
as generous as like he's just, he always want to do things pro. The dub teams are doing their very best, and this is just my experience with my son to make these teams as professional as possible, so that that these players can have this experience of really feeling like this is sort of what it's like to be a pro. Well, yeah, right? quite honestly, I think it's quite close to what it's like being a minor pro yeah 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 yeah, i think that's a good way to put it right yeah so not nhl standards no but as far as a minor pro it's it's very very similar and i know that even in brandon where jacks was like they had done so many improvements and a a new guy bought the team and they were doing all this stuff it was really cool i remember going to the dressing room and just being like oh my gosh this is amazing (laughs) yeah like i wish this was my work situation yep the Relentless Podcast is brought to you by You Can Youth Services, which I am very proud to be a part of. You Can Youth Services is an organization that helps young people move out of harm's way and onto a path of economic independence. If you want to learn more about the incredible work that we do with some very vulnerable young people, please go to www.youcan.ca. That's www.youcan.ca. When you were in Red Deer, living in the community, being part of the community, doing all that type of stuff, what were some of your your best moments with the Red Deer Rebels? Like, I mean, there's been some amazing hockey players that have gone through that program in your time there, obviously. But like some of those moments that were just like, wow, this is out of this world. I can't believe I'm getting I mean, most days you're probably can't believe I'm getting paid for this. This Every is awesome. Day. Yeah. But what were those big, big well, ones? Of course, on a success is is going to be part of it. So the Memorial Cup in two thousand and one, right? That team was expected to be good right. going into two thousand, and a lot of lot of uh, you know the pundits had them picked to be one of the better teams, which they were. Yeah. But this was a team from the middle of December to the end of May, never lost two games in a row. Wow! Like who was on that team? Give some names. Uh, well, you had Colby Armstrong. Right. Yeah, he was all right. Boyd Gordon right. was on that. Yeah. Was on that team. Yeah. Um, he, uh, Justin Mapletoft was the leading scorer, led okay. the WHL in scoring that yeah. year. Uh, went on to play for the Islanders for a while. Yeah. Uh, now back at home in Calgary. Uh, Jim Vandermeer. Yeah. He was yeah, on yeah, that yeah. team. Oh, yeah. one tough customer. Right. Let me tell you. And those were the days where fighting was just an everyday. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was. Yeah, yeah. That was. That was still. That that era wasn't much different than the late eighties, early nineties. Right. It was right. basically the same. Yeah. So uh, just a well put together team. Yeah, top yeah. to bottom. That it, it was it was it was uh incredibly deep and really focused. Mm. And it started with Jim Vandermeer. He was the captain. Yeah. And if Jim s- said like if you said to Jim, Jim, hey, I can you can you make sure the guys do this? It's done. Right. You never had to ask. Didn't twice. mess with Jimmy. You didn't. No. Uh that's a tough family yeah, the yeah. vandermeers from caroline yeah. alberta yeah i've Whoa. heard of that I'm trying to think there's another podcast i was listening to who the heck was it and they were talking about like going to that family and just how like just going there for supper or something when they were playing with them and just how tough they are. who was it that was telling you do you know could this it be story? one of the russells because uh, chris, Ru- chris russell is from carolina or no. it could have been it may be one of the spit and chicklets it was of, it was on a spit and chicklets and they were talking probably about, about it. pete vandermeer because i was the oldest of the right. vandermeers and he was a really tough customer yeah that it was on spit and it had chicklets. to be somebody was telling a story and they were playing playing with with <laughs> went to the house and it's like what have i entered into but oh yeah like, yeah yeah anyways so, yeah. anyways so yeah he was part of it that team was amazing uh the the playoff run was was magical and the the whole city and and area of central alberta was so engaged yeah just behind the team the team yeah. had got to the conference final before but that was it so it was the first time in the western league final and then they win it and there was this huge bunch of people waiting for us at the rink when we got back from portland and just going crazy and the memorial cup that year was in regina so people could drive to it Mm -hmm. and they did Mm -hmm. and then red deer wins it in overtime against valdor and it was like exciting valdor had a really good team but it just seemed like it was going to be it was going to be red deer's year it was destiny destiny um and just yeah so that was exciting and that summer was just a blur because again, same thing. After they won, and and uh, we got back, there was just a, a throng of people waiting in the parking lot mm. for the team. Mm-hmm. And then there was like a parade, and mm. like it was a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. So then that team, that team wins in 01. They go to the league final and lose in 02. League final again in 03 and lose. Go to the conference final in 04, 
and, and lose out there. So you had a four-year run where you went three rounds or better. Yeah. So it was an incredible time because, um, of course, you're changing players over. Yeah. Yeah. But you're just you just had good players because then the next year, they, most people think that Cam Ward, Dion Phaneuf, and Colin Fraser played on the Memorial Cup team. They didn't. They came in the next year. Right. Right. Like, and Dion was playing, uh, you know, Southside Athletic Club in yeah. Edmonton, and, and Cam Ward was playing in Sherwood Park. Yeah. Colin Fraser was in in British Columbia yeah. in the Lower Mainland, playing Junior B at that time. Yeah. And then all those guys came in after. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. So that you know that is something I'll, I'll never forget. That. Yeah. Then yeah. hosting the Memorial Cup in 2016. Mm. Uh, that the Memorial Cup is just such it's, a great event. Such a big deal. It's like a 12 day event. That reminds me of a Grey Cup. Right. Because people come from all over Canada to come to this, whether yeah. the team's in or not. Right. And there's right. one game a day. Yeah. And then there's a party yeah. every night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you got to yeah, pace yeah. yourself for yeah. these things. Yeah, absolutely. You absolutely. can't burn out early. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that can happen. Because by day nine, you are hurt. Oh, you're done. Yeah. So we hosted this thing, and, and we're putting together the radio. So, because all the games are going to be on TV. Back then, they were on uh, Sportsnet. And and we went to the CHL and said, can we broadcast every game? And they were like, sure, fill your boots. Yeah. So, that, and that was an easy sell. Yeah. Because I know the games are on television, but people are working, people are driving, people are going to their kids' sporting events, sure. whatever. They're going to tune in on the yeah. radio to know what yeah. the hell's going on. So, we sold that. We sold that right out. Like, nice. No problem. And we did every game. So you can't go out at night. Yeah. Because if you do, you're going to yeah. have no voice. Yeah, you're pooched. Yeah, yeah, you're pooched. Yeah. I was feeling it, let me yeah. tell you. I waited till the last night to go out. And yeah. I, went, I went out. Yeah. I went out. <laughs> but that was great. Um, Mike Moeller, uh, former Buffalo Sabre, former Edmonton Oiler, was my color guy for 22 years. Wow. And, and Moles was on for the Memorial Cup. And so he would do all the home games. Yeah. And then he would do, you know, a few Edmonton Calgary's. Sure. And he did come to the Memorial Cup in Regina. Sure. But for the most part, I do the the road games either by myself or with a guest sure. commentator. Sure. Yeah. Just bring some local Yahoo. No, no, no. no. It had to be uh just not some random. It had you to met be a lobby? known commodity. Oh. oh. Yeah, yeah. Any any big celebs? Well, Rob Lawlisher. I had him do some games. <laughs> like I said, oh. local yahoos. Okay. Wow. Well, yeah. It's a fine line. I not had, that fine of a line. <laughs> no, maybe not. Uh, Scott Sissons, who played with Rob and I in Saskatoon. Yeah, I know that name. Yeah. Uh, Sizz would do games in Saskatoon when he could because right he was coaching um, AAA U18 yeah, yeah. Uh, Saskatoon Blazers. So yeah. sometimes he was busy. I did have the lead singer from the band One Bad Son do Color Twice. One bad son. Shane Volk. They're, they're going to be playing at K-Days this okay. year. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Great band. Outstanding. Okay. okay. Look them up, folks. Yeah. Look them up, listeners. So Shane did uh, color one night in Vancouver, one night in Saskatoon. And, and, and Shane, was, he, was he good? Yeah, very. Yeah. Incredibly good. Yeah. Because he, he knows hockey. Sure. But the beauty of it was Shane would tweet it out during the day that he was doing color yeah. and that would go out to all the people that follow the band. Mm -hmm. So you get a bunch of people listening just cause Shane's on the broadcast yeah. that wouldn't normally listen. Yeah, yeah. 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 So like your online numbers would just, just shoot through, through the roof. Yeah, that's awesome. And, but they were a band that uh, I got to know, uh, saw them play in, uh, in Red Deer many times. And uh, they're just, they're, they're good guys. They're from Saskatoon. Yeah. Right on. So then. Yeah. You're thinking, I'm, I love this. Look what I, you're looking back on, look what I've built. And with the help of others as well, yes. right? You, you, we can never take all the credit, but look what I've built. I've been relentless to build this Red Deer Rebel empire with well, Mr. Sutter and some others. <laughs> Mostly. And then did you have aspirations, which I'm assuming you did, to try to get to the National Hockey League as a broadcaster? Well, I, I wasn't um, I wasn't actively looking. Uh, I don't know that there was a, a time in those twenty two years where I was like dying to go. Mm -hmm. um, I had uh, had uh, talked to a few people a couple of times, but none of it was of any significance. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, years and years ago. So I wasn't looking for that to to be a thing. Uh, cause again, I did, I loved where I was and I mm -hmm. loved what I did. 
So I was. You're that, content. Yeah, if that was my lot in life, sure. There, there could be far worse. It's a good lot. Yeah, is a good lot. Yeah. But then this and this came out of absolute nowhere. Can you tell us the story? Because because you didn't tell me the story. No, I didn't want to tell you. So tell me the story. I'll tell you the story. Okay. Okay. So I did get a, a little bit of a heads up first um, from Bob Stoffer, who I do the games with and quite enjoy doing the games with. Yeah. I've known Bob since I was probably, I don't know, 20 years old. Sure. So we go way back. But he said, hey, there's something might be coming down. Uh, like there might be moves being made. And I was, and this is, of course, this is when COVID hit. Right. So the Western League's not playing. <laughs> yeah. So now we're just, you know, making up stuff to do. Yeah. Uh, but you're, on, you're on CERB. Well, we didn't know when when it was going to start up right. and how and. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, my kid was in the W at the same time. It yeah. was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. Just like the rest of the world. Of course. But it was crazy. Yeah. So I'm walking my two dogs one day. What are your dogs' names? Uh, Diesel and Daisy. They're boxers. I like those. That's I love nice. boxer dogs. I just like the names. That's yeah, cool. They're 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 good. Good boys and girls. So we're we're on a dog walk and uh we're just about back to uh to Shea Moon and mm-hmm. my phone rings and it's Brent Sutter. And Brent says, uh, hey Mooner, uh yeah, the Oilers called. They want permission to talk to you. Um like like uh, some sort of a radio deal or something. I said, All right. I said, so they're gonna give you a call. All right, thanks. And, you know, about 10 minutes later, they do. So then they laid out what the situation was. Who calls was. you? Like, who, who who from the Oilers calls uh, you? Tim Shipton. Okay. So, so I don't know who that is. He, he, uh, he lays out kind of what the what the deal is. He's like, would yeah. you be interested in this? Like, Absolutely. Um, can you do an interview tomorrow? So the first call came on the Thursday. Friday, we did an interview. Then they asked if I could do another one on Saturday, which we did. Sunday, they told me I had it. Monday, we announced it. Tuesday, I was in Edmonton. Boom. I was at practice on Tuesday. And I called my first game, I think, two nights later or three nights later. Like, this is all within one week. All within one week. Man. Like, that happened so fast. It was unbelievable. And this all went down because Jack Michaels, who had been calling the games for, at that point, what, 10 years? 11 uh, years, something like that. Yeah, something well, like that. Well, a decade or just maybe. Yeah, probably just, a little more. Just under a little more. Yeah. Um, He, he ended up doing, he's getting the TV stuff now. Yes. Right? For the sports net and all yeah. that. So now this spot comes open. Yeah. And you get the call. Did they interview other people? Yes, you know? they did. They yeah. did. Yeah. Look at you. Then they just a stud. No. So fortunate. So what was that interview pro? Who interviews you? Like, is it, do you know what I'm saying? Like, is Bob Stoffer in there? Because he's like, well, I got to no, work no, with this guy. No. no. So he has no say on this. Like well, the color I don't know. I don't know what happens behind the scenes. Right. I have no idea. Right. Um, How many people are interviewing you? Uh, it was uh, two the first time and one the second time. Okay. And, so, and what kind of questions? Well, you know, we just is it like, to- have you had any conflict in the workplace and no. how did you handle it? No. Like, what, like, what type of stuff were they asking? It was very hockey and broadcasting. Did they say type name stuff. every oiler no, right we now? Did, we didn't get no? into that. No, because I, quite honestly, I, I couldn't could at that time. And that's funny because when I, I was about to do my, my first game, I, there were so many people that said, and I was like cramming, like I'm cramming for a test. Right. I'm, I'm drinking out of a fire hose. Right. Like, because they're like, well, you know the NHL. Actually, you know what? I don't. Right. And you know why I don't? Because at that time, I'm doing 72 WHL games a year. I'm traveling. I'm, I'm, you know how many times I watch I'm hockey? I'm writing the programs for yeah. every home game. You know how many hockey night in Canada I see during a year? Maybe right. one. Right. Because in the Western League, you always play Friday. You always play Saturday. Sometimes you play Sunday. Right. You got some Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't have time to watch the NHL. Right. I, I would casually watch the Oilers. That's it. Did you tell them that? No, I didn't have to. They knew. They knew. They're okay. hockey people. They, they okay. knew exactly what I was doing. So, I no, I did not have to tell them that. They knew that. So, yeah, we just talked about broadcasting stuff. We talked right. about hockey. And right. What I had done in Red Deer. And right. Blah, you know, that kind of stuff. Just kind of what I had done, you right, know? Right, 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 right. So, Plus, you're a, uh, you're a seasoned vet now. Like 22 years in one job. I'm telling yeah. you, as an employer, if somebody comes in and I went after them, I made the call to them. And they were willing to come in, and they've been somewhere for I'll call it ten years. I'm like, that's impressive to me. That shows commitment. That shows that you've got some heart to do this, right? So that yeah. one played big into that too. It so, would have. And and I'd done twelve years of 
Shaw TV mm-hmm. in and around um, Red Deer games. Right. So Shaw TV back then did uh, WHL games. Right, they do right, one right. game a week. And then in the playoffs, this, I loved when they did this. And it's really too bad it all went away. Uh, is they would take a series and televise the whole series. Right. So you could get invested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when Red Deer when Red Deer would either, you know, lose out or if they didn't make the playoffs or whatever, then Shaw was like, what can you do? Yeah, whatever you need. And then I would, but I rarely did play-by-play. Sometimes I did. Yeah. Sometimes I did color. Sometimes I was host. Sometimes I was between the benches. Mm -hmm. Like it was fun doing different things. That's not, you know, because I don't Mm -hmm. want to do the the same thing all the time. Let's let's But you're also learning. Absolutely you are. Yeah. Still am. I'm learning all the time. Absolutely. Yeah, you just trying to So all now in. you are play by play for the I mean really could it have worked out any better? No. And 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 this is and this is the absolute truth. Like before this happened, before I got this, if you said, "Hey Cam, um you can be a play by play guy in the NHL and here's at that time the 31 teams and you could rank them what one's number 1." Edmonton's number one by a ton because right. I, lo- I love Edmonton. I right. love it here. Right. Uh, my wife and I had bought a condo like years before I got this gig here. Yeah. Because yeah. Well, our daughter was going to U of A. But yeah. had she been going to university in another city, yeah. we wouldn't have bought a condo. Right. But you're from here. Exactly. You know, I mean, now, oh, here's a question that I have for you. Like, so as, are you like, are you, as the Oilers play by play, I'm assuming like you, you're a fan of the NHL, you're a fan of hockey, but yeah. You're allowed to be a homer, aren't you? Do they well, tell you no. don't be a homer? No, they don't. They, they don't have not told me that at all. Okay. But I, I take the same um, attitude towards the broadcast here as I did in Red Deer, as I did in Nanaimo. You got to know your audience. Yeah. Your audience are heavy majority Oiler fans. Absolutely. So do I have it skewed Oiler way? Yeah, absolutely. I get more excited for Oiler goals than I do the opposition goals. You're kind of supposed to. You're getting paid by the Oilers. True. Right. But I want to tell an accurate story of what's happening that that mm-hmm. night. So if somebody from the opposition plays well, that needs to be acknowledged. Absolutely. So that's... Uh, well, of course, absolutely it does. It makes me laugh sometimes. You'll see it online... Uh... Especially around Stoffer. Oh, you're such a homer. I hear guys uh, call into the radio, you're such a homer. And I'm like, when, when Stoff, because I'll tell you one thing Stoff does that I love. You do it sometimes too, which makes me laugh. The odd time, maybe a little more of Stoff. He goes pretty freaking hard on the refs. And I, but yeah, I it, won't do that. But that's it, not that's not my everything style. Everything he's but, saying, yeah. I'm agreeing a million. And I'm like, you go get him, Stoffer. You go get him, man. Because he goes hard sometimes a, and I yeah, love it. I love a, it. Reffin's a tough gig. It's I wouldn't want that for nothing. Gig, I wouldn't Especially want it for nothing. The speed of it all. So let's let's talk now the difference. And, and this is you talked about how much you loved Red Deer, how much you loved the life, the everything about it. Yeah. But there's got to be some real nice perks being in the NHL. Well, this is and this I knew this was going to be good. This has exceeded my expectations. You mean the podcast? Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. And. Oh, sorry, you know, the NHL. Yeah, sure, yeah. that too. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's been great. I mean, at the end of the day, you're broadcasting a hockey game, which right. is is no different. I mean, right. the hockey's better, but uh, you no, know, no, no, no. I, like, like I'm not talking about like, ooh, the microphones are nicer. What are some of those perks? Uh, like, I mean, it's just that's, like the the travel. Well, the travel's good. Yeah, you're not you know going over the frozen tundra on a bus. <laughs> yeah. Like, Although, you know what? I had no problem with that. I know you didn't. I uh, you no loved problem. the life. I know you loved the life, but now you guys have a chartered plane. Well, you get places quicker. Right. That is for right. sure. Right, right. Um, Although you did say when we did our little pre-pod interview, because I was like, man, you get to see all these cities. And you said, honestly, well, Kyle, we're yeah. not there much. Like, yeah. it's like, we're there, but we're busy. We're preparing. We're and then working, you leave. And then we leave. Yeah. yeah that, it's not like it's a little three-day holiday every time you're there. Like on the odd trip. There'll be one of those CBA mandated day off. Mm-hmm. So then you'll have a day sure. where you could go do something. Yeah. And on those days off, you can't travel and they, they, they don't go to the rink. Yeah. So that does happen, but it doesn't happen a lot. Mm. Like, so that's usually not in Nashville or, you know, it's probably, I don't work I'm great, not, yeah. uh, I've <laughs> that's heard a great that. place. I, it, most NHL guys say that is the best place to go to have a good time. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm not a gambler. No. So I don't I don't spend you time don't care in about Vegas. No, yeah. not at no. all. And uh it, yeah, so like 
Vegas is okay. Yeah. I would never go there if it wasn't for hockey, sure. quite honestly. Sure. Um, if we want to talk favorite places on yeah. the road, yeah. number one, New York. Yeah. I'm, I love New York. It'd be unreal. I'd love to go there. Never been. Oh, it's, it's my, I think I'd gone there five times on my own. Yeah. Just because I love it so much. Yeah. Whether you want to go see good comedy or music, sure. sports, live theater, sure. it's all there. And that subway system is so easy. You can get everywhere. Amazing. I just, I, I love, that's my favorite. For And, and Madison Square Garden is awesome. Yeah. Uh, and, but right up there, like right in the mix. And, and I put it in the same conversation as Montreal. Because mm. again, Montreal downtown is great. Awesome. It's different than anything out west. Yeah. So there's the the difference factor. Yeah. Uh, and downtown's beautiful, but that rink, you it's get awesome. in there, that's hockey. You yeah. know it's hockey. Yeah. There's a vibe. There's a feel. I've never watched a hockey game there, but I've been to, to, to you two concerts there. And it is an unbelievable, just the city. It's yeah. a, it's just an unbelievable. City. A great place to it's go. An unbelievable. So city. I've got I've got New York number one. And I got Montreal like right, right in there. behind there. Right yeah. there. We won't talk about your least favorite because that's not fair. No, that's not fair. And there isn't one. There isn't <laughs> one because you know what? You got a good game. They're all man. good. What What is your uh, like the favorite part of your job? You know what the favorite part? Wow, that's it. It's. It's right before the game starts, like because I like to go early. Yeah. I never like to rush. Yeah. I like to get in and ease into things. Yeah. So I mean, you go to the morning skate and you know get some interviews, stuff for the pregame show, and yeah. then you do your your prep, your, yeah. your final prep. Yeah. Um, but when I get to the rink, and and the rink hasn't opened yet, right. you know what I mean? Right. So you got the people like that work in the concessions sure. and stuff. They're working and they're yeah. they're getting stuff, and it hasn't come alive. And then when it starts to come alive and the doors open right. and then they get the music going and you, you yeah. can smell the popcorn. Yeah. You're yeah. like, just that, that, that anticipation of the game. And it's no different in the NHL, the WHL, I had, and to the BC Junior League. Right. I had the exact same feeling. All the of the same those. routine. You would do it the same. Yes. Right? Where it's that that quiet hustle bustle of the employees just yep. getting things yep. ready. You hear a little something slam and it's over, building and building up, and then you get to the warm up and the music's going. Yeah. People are now starting to filter in, and then yeah. you have you know the lights out and the come out onto the ice. And Vegas does that oh. as good or better yep. than anybody. Yeah, uh, that's pretty good stuff. But you know, or the vibe that we get at Rogers Place, oh. especially in the playoffs. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, like. I like I just like I mean the emotion is is it's overwhelming at times for yeah. a guy that grew up here. What's the best so so far in your NHL career? Yeah. What is the your favorite goal you've called? Oh, it might have been that uh I don't know if I can pick one, but uh when Connor McDavid went through the entire New York Ranger team. Oh my gosh. There was that. I think that was goal of the year, wasn't it? On yeah, TSN and all that. It had that to was, be. That it was, had to be. That was not that been past goal, season. Goal that was two the, seasons. Call of the decade. Like it's unreal. <laughs> but he does it all the time. I know. It's unbelievable. I know. You can't um like the, be, when you do this all the time and you've watched as many games as I have, you can anticipate stuff. And you're seeing it from you know the bird's eye view. Yeah. But with him, you 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 have to anticipate the unexplainable. Right. Because he does things that. Well, he turns on a dime do. like nobody else does, and then you don't know what's happening because it happens so fast. When he has the puck on the wall, and the defender's trying to close that gap, and and he's he's trying to push him towards the boards, and Connor has that ability to see or feel where that pressure is coming from, what hip, right, and then spin the other way. Right. And the defender is looking at a vapor trail. Right. Now he's looking at his number. And if you're looking at his number, it's too late. Because he's doing this at 40 kilometers an hour yeah. on two pieces of metal on ice. It's amazing how he spins off of the pressure and you think you have him contained and now you're, you're holding air <laughs> and he's gone. You know, when I think about hockey – just growing up playing it at, at very, very high house league levels. Um, I was captain of my house league team when I was 16. Yeah, right. Cam. Have yeah. See. Have yeah. I, see. I, I actually, I'm not lying. We have a poster size of it. <laughs> I, not lying. We, really? We yeah. We gave it away at UCAN stuff yeah. for our comedy nights. I get you one. I'll okay. Get you one. Well, that's good to I'll know. I'll sign it. 
Yeah. Well, but I always personalize it so that you can't sell it. Okay. So okay. Just a heads yeah, up. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, when, I, when I think of, of hockey and, and it, it really is an incredibly beautiful sport to watch, to see what these athletes are doing on two pieces of metal on ice yeah. with this little rubber puck and a stick, the way that it is phenomenal athleticism, but it's Especially beautiful. if you see it at ice level oh. or close to ice level, then you can appreciate oh. the speed. It is just, un- it's unreal. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And you get to spend your life calling those games. Well, that was the plan. What a yeah. thrill, man. <laughs> That's so cool. It's that's a cool job because here's the thing, there's only 32 of them in the world for the, yeah. to be an NHL play-by-play broadcast. I would say the likelihood for, and not not always, but mostly for a, for a Canadian is there's seven, right? Because you know what, you're right. For an American team to hire you, they really, really, really have to go to bat. Sure. So you you better have some. There's sort seven of, of in. these jobs. Seven of these jobs. I'm just, it's, it's hitting me right now. You're actually cooler than I thought you were. Now I'm oh, getting boy. what my wife is talking right, about, right, Cameron. It's- wolf Child Harvest right. Moon. Wolf Child Harvest. You like that, Wolf Child? Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. Do you know that um, do like Ian Asprey from The Cult? Remember, do he, I? Right? I love The Cult. Right? Oh, love The Cult. And so he used to call, him the, he would call himself the Wolf Child. Yeah. And uh, I had this, this kid I grew up with. His name was Chris. And he was a massive cult fan, like the same way I am with you two, which is a bit much. And he was like that. And I remember we were there and I actually wasn't, I don't think I was at this show, but some, because we, we did see them a couple of times, but maybe I was there and these guys were there and they went and they were waiting by the bus and for the cult to come out. And Ian Asprey comes out and this kid, Chris goes, wolf child, wolf child. He was just so excited. Right. And Ian Asprey turns him and he just very seriously goes, the wolf child has died, my friend. The wolf child has died. Oh. Walks away. Chris was crushed. I don't oh. even know why this story is coming into this podcast. I, I love it. I somehow called you wolf I, child uh, to say your parents were hippies. In uh, in Saskatoon, I busted curfew one night to go see the cult. Oh, yeah. I Worth did. it. Worth it. Yeah. Unbelievable. I didn't go out after. No. I was not partaking no. in any sort of alcoholic no. beverages. No. I just wanted to see the band. Yeah. So I went with one of my teammates, who I'm not going to throw under the bus no. at this point. You, we, you, just so you know, you could, because you're not going to get in trouble now. True, but I still don't want okay. it. Uh, that's loyalty. I, I went to the show. We went to the show and just went straight home. Yeah. So we weren't even out late. Like right. we would have been home, but I think curfew would have been at like 10 and we might've been out till 11, yeah. but I really wanted to see them. Yeah. And, oh. Did, it, you, get, did you get in trouble? Did you get busted? No. Okay, good. What a band. What in their heyday. Yeah. Because I did see them probably 10 years ago play like sure. Reds or whatever. Yeah. And you know what? It was still pretty good, but they, they were just a bit. Yeah. That was. Well, their heyday though, they're unbelievable. Late, like mid 80s to early 90s. Uh-huh. Unbelievable. unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Very good band. Okay, Wolf Child. Listen, this has been a fun conversation. I've enjoyed. Thanks. Oh, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you one more thing. Your prep for games. Yeah. How. Because you you need to listen. You got to know all your Oilers. Uh-huh. You got to know all your little tidbits about them. <clears throat> you got to, and I guess, listen, I get it. You got Bob Stoffer, who's like the statistician wizard. I'm pretty his, sure. His recall is the best I've ever seen. It's insane, it's isn't it? unbelievable. Like you could ask him about people from the, probably the 40s, 50s, 60s. Like he oh, knows about just, everything. It's not just hockey. It's football. It's soccer. It's golf. It, Politics. He knows oh yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Like his recall is. His brain. So, how so does the, it work? That's why I love working with him because I have this encyclopedia right. of information there and it adds so much to the broadcast. Yeah. yeah it's so good. But for you prepping. Yeah. You got to know all these names, mm-hmm. you know, all these little tidbits on the Oilers. Then, and I'm assuming you got to know the Bakersfield, the AHL guys too. Then you got to know all the other teams, 31 of them. And I obviously not every single day, but every time you, you got to, what's the prep like for yeah, that? Yeah, it's, it's a lot. Um, and I've got a bit of a bit of a system that I think somewhat streamlines it, but yeah, like I the day before, I try to get as much done the day before as I can. Yeah. Like if it's not a back to back. Yeah. And and if the opposition's not playing back to back, then you can get quite a bit of info and quite a bit of stuff done. So I, I do a book 
that has the four lines of 6D and the two goalies for both teams. But I also have these cards that, I mean, once I get the cards done, they're they're pretty static for the season because they don't have like up-to-date stats. The, the right. cards will have like age and hometown and, and where they played before they got pro, right. where they were drafted and their right. contract status. Right, right, so That's right. going to stay the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my book has, you know, the current stats, streaks, uh, stats versus opposition, stuff that I would use in the broadcast. Yeah. So you're going to do all this prep and you're probably only going to need 30%, mm -hmm. but you don't know what 30% you're going to need. That's right. Because you don't know how the game's going to go. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the story. You don't know who's going to score the goals, who's going to get yeah. the assists, who's going to get the penalty. What are right. going to be the storylines? Right. What are going to be the storylines of that night? That's what I love about the game. Yeah. Is that it's a blank sheet to start every night and your job is to tell the story accurately and hopefully in an entertaining fashion on however it goes. So I'm the go-between. Yeah. If you're, say you're driving down Highway 2, you're driving from Red Deer to Edmonton, mm -hmm. and you're going to throw the Oilers game on, I want to make sure that I put you there, that you know where the puck is. I'm giving you the score all mm -hmm. the time. But you're you're, by the inflection of my voice, you're going to be able to ascertain when goal scoring opportunities are about to become imminent. Yeah. So like, that's all part of it. And I listen to like about every, Oh, I don't know. Probably about every five or six games. I, 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 on a non game day, I make coffee. I put the game on. I usually lower the lights and I listen and can I see it? Yeah. Yeah. And where so, can I improve? Where yes, can I get exactly. better? Exactly. And what, I make yeah. notes. Because yeah. if I, I I want people to be able to see the game. Yeah. Well, let me tell you this, Ken. Via the radio. You're good at it. Thank you. You're good at it. I'm, I'm This has been a hard. great conversation. It's been fun. Now, we end every Relentless podcast with the Relentless Quiz. It's a scientifically created quiz. I, I, okay. We uh, invested some money into it. Let's go. This is going to determine whether or not you are relentless. We'll see. <clears throat> Camus. Yes. Fruits or vegetables? Fruits. City or countryside? Oh, city. You love living downtown uh, Edmonton, which, by the way, Edmontonians, you need to come downtown. Cam Moon will give you tours. That's he right. loves it down here. That's right. Loves it. Dirty bathroom or dirty kitchen? Ugh. I'm a neat freak. Mm -hmm. You got to pick one. Ugh. I guess bathroom. Okay. But you know what? That that kills me to say that. Yeah. Oh, I might not even sleep tonight. Thank you. Sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. just part of the process. Oh. Salty or sweet? Salty. Interesting, because you went fruit, then you go salty. This I know. Is very interesting yeah. to me. Yep. Morning or night? Oh. Morning. Morning. Favorite comedy movie? <gasps> Whoa, we have opened up a yes. Pandora's box. Yes. There's so many. I know. I have. And you have to pick your favorite. Like it has to be your legitimate favorite, Cam. It can't be what you think is your favorite favorite comedy pound yeah. for pound my favorite comedy it's probably super bad nice <laughs> i really love super bad so good. what an evening that those oh, boys had what, what an night. evening i just love the cops man just, oh, it's just, unbelievable it's just like start to finish start to finish nailed it's it. just non-stop laughter yeah non-stop laughter um big party or small gathering <laughs> both are good <laughs> But I'd probably go small gathering. Small gathering. Okay. Okay. Sometimes your little laugh, a little it's a, like it's a mischievous laugh. We're like, oh, yeah. yeah. Cam Moon likes to party. Okay. Uh, phone in the bathroom or no phone in the bathroom? No. I don't believe you, Cam. Yeah. Okay. I don't because I think everyone takes it in there. It's the newspaper. It's the 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 comic books. It's the the thing of the 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 yeah. In and out like a cat. Okay. Are you kidding me? Okay. Uh, favorite love song of all time. Ugh. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know. Let's... Well, do we know how you feel about love? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I'm not a country music guy, right. so there's probably a bunch of those in that genre. Yeah. More of a hard rock guy. Okay, but there's the hard rock love songs. There are hard rock well, love know. songs, aren't there? 
I'm trying to think of some. Come on, come on. Glam metal power ballad, sure, of some sort. It's gonna uh, be a Bon Jovi, a yeah, Molly Crew song. A, no, Molly. No, no, okay. No, they wouldn't be able to pull it off. No. Um, bon Jovi could pull it off. Okay, so give, give me one of those. Uh, okay, Let's, I'll give you one of those. I don't know. That I don't know which one. On one of those. I know a guy that doesn't say Bon Jovi. How about that bed of roses? Yeah, one? that's a go. good one. That's a good one. I suppose. Sing it. No. No. Okay. No. La- on, I'm not lying. Last guy on the podcast, he came up with a song. I go, oh, can you sing it for me? He did not. He just, no, he did not. He just, it was awesome. Man. Was it good? <laughs> it was all right. Oh. Hey, I wouldn't have done it. No. But and I was like, and we were on Zoom, and I'm like, what is happening right now? But it was great. He just started singing it. Yeah. So I don't expect that to you. Yeah. yeah. It's well, a good tune though. It's on. It's on my iPod. Is it? Yeah. It's oh, good. Okay. It's a good song. Um, cake or pie? Pie. I love pie so oh, much. You know what? I found that uh, one, well, two of the uh, grocery stores downtown do do sell you a that, pie for one. Oh, like nice little this, mini guys. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, just yeah. no, like one, like like a quarter of a pie. Yeah. That's so. Nice. I walk by That's it, nice. and in my head, I'm like, "Don't get the pie. Yeah, don't get the, pie. get the pie. Then I get the pie. You have to get the pie, and then if you can heat it up a little, depending on the type of pie, you heat it up sure. a little bit. Some uh, nice vanilla ice cream. Yeah. Well, I don't know. No. 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 That's where I draw the line. Oh, I like that. Well, because I got issues, you know. Oh, yeah. you got uh, lactose type stuff. No. 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 I just, just. You just don't like. Uh, it's bad who... enough. I got the pie. You know what kind of guilt that I'm oh, going to. Oh, yeah. See, for, for, for listen, if you're watching this on YouTube, yeah. first of all, a couple things. Uh, one, sorry that the lights are glaring off of me and Cam's head the way they are because this this is a lot of glare happening compared yeah. to normal. Uh, and two, you would notice that Cam is actually quite fit. You are a fit person. You had I originally said you could do this with your shirt off. You said okay for some okay. reason. All you right. said no. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. You then thought maybe I should. I said no. We don't want this production shut down. So. Anyways, Cam is a fit guy. So you, you're you like hardcore with the health and the eating and stuff, eh? Like we don't need to well, get big into no, it, but, but you like are. Fitness is uh, yeah, something to that's important to me, yes. I like ice cream on my okay. pie. And then the last question. Yeah. Describe your relentless podcast experience in four words. This was really fun. Nice. You yeah. did it well. Do you know that most people just go... Like they'll just use sing- singular words. Like they don't do a sentence. I, Which, but that, the whole point of oh. when I started this was I wanted people to go. This was really fun, or yeah. Kyle is a jerk, or whatever. But most people are like educational, <laughs> inspirational. And so, <laughs> I like how you did that. Okay. Where can we find you on the smo- the the smoshal? the smoshal You can't medias the social you medias. Not. You don't. You're not on any, nothing. You don't tweet. Well, I'm on Twitter, but I'm not on Twitter. Like I use Twitter for for my work. What, you, what do you, when you say you're not on Twitter, you have somebody who tweets for you? No, I don't tweet. Oh, I don't I tweet. That, I don't like anything. I thought that'd be so cool if you and were that my, high up now. My Twitter handle is a play on my name. So if you can find me, good for you. Hang a moon? No. What is it? It's uh, and it's oh, got a picture of one of my dogs. Okay. So you don't? I do don't social tweet. Media. No, I don't tweet. I don't like anything. I just follow like all the NHL right. info. Makes da, 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 da. Makes and sense. Major League Baseball. So we're not going to find you on our social, but I'm I'll sure tell I'm... you where we will find you. Six thirty, Ched. Yeah, you right. Will. Doing yeah. Oilers games. Yeah. Making us feel good when you. I know. I'm. I was going to ask you if you could somehow like do a call right now, but you can't. That's that's hard that, to yeah, replicate. Hard to do. Like, I was going to be like, can you do like, and the Relentless Podcast scores. But I was like, no, that's, that's stupid. It's a yeah, dumb it's, idea. It's hard to, hard to <laughs> it's recapture it, that. Cam, you're being yeah. nice. It's a I dumb just, idea. Well, I was just thinking. We're making stuff up as we I go. I know. I've appreciated our time. You're a good guy. My wife was right. <laughs> she, no, I'm, I'm not trying to be funny anymore. Okay. She was right. You're a well, good thank dude. You. Thank you. You're positive. You're nice. You have energy. You, I can tell that you like to give back to people. You like to treat others well. That to me is also why you have now hit the pinnacle of your career doing what you're doing. And the fact that you do go back to Nate and you talk to these young people and you keep doing what you're doing, man, because it's awesome. You deserve what you have. Thank and you. I really appreciate you sharing how you've had to be relentless in your life to get to where you are. You're a cool success story, bud. Thank you. Thank you. It was very yeah. enjoyable. Folks, you can find us at www.ucan.ca. That's Y-O-U-C-A-N.ca. And you can find me on Twitter 
at Kyle Dubay. It's really the only place I, and I don't, I tweet sometimes, but not really my opinions. No one wants to hear them. But uh, we appreciate all of you listening. And uh, until next time, thanks again, Cam. All right. Thank you. This series is proudly produced by the team at Road 55. Road 55 creates content that connects. For more information, check our website, www.road55.ca.